Angela, it is incredible to have you on Uncover Wealth Radio today. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, how are you? So good to be here. Wonderful. So Angela, before we get into the seven signs it's time to hire a business coach, why don't you share with us the difference between a coach, a consultant, a mentor, all these terms get bandied around, particularly in the online space, and they can be kind of confusing to people. Yes, absolutely. So what I have found in my time in being a business consultant for women in business is that people look at things as being a mentor. They look at at having a business coach or a consultant. So for me, I just like to clarify, because when we're talking about this today, it just will help streamline the process for everyone. So I look at as a mentor, typically someone who is in an unpaid role. You're not meeting on a regular basis. Uh, They help move your business forward, but it's not very strategic. It could be someone like if you're a photographer, they're a photographer and they've been doing it for years. It, not, it may or may not be, do you know what I mean, in the same zone of genius that you have. But again, I find that mentors are quite casual, all right? Then when I look at a business coach, as I look at it as, as a business coach, is if you look at the true definition of coaching, is, is it's about taking information from your client, reframing that, put it back to them. But ultimately, as the client, you're actually giving the coach what you need. They're just making you see things in a different way. So they ask a lot of questions. Sometimes I use the word loosely. There might be a bit of fluff there, all right? Um, but sometimes you actually know those questions. You just need that coach to unpack it and reframe it for you. All right. But when I look at a business consultant as I look at a business consultant as you're going like, listen, I don't need the fluff. I don't need to reframe. I actually need you to advise me and guide me on what holes are missing or what holes are leaking in my business and how can you fix them? And it's up to that consultant to make sure that they've got the right skill set to be able to do that um, in order to patch those holes. So you don't have a leaky business anymore. So I'm really looking at again, informal, is the mentor uh, you've then got the business coach who's kind of reframing just what you said and you know kind of guiding nurturing could be a little bit of fluff and a consultant's more like nope this is wrong this is why it's wrong this is how we need to adapt it to your business so and that's more like that advisory role so for me for example as I look at myself 75% consultant 25% coach I still think it's important to have those coaching skills to nurture and make sure that people aren't dependent on your thought process but there are times when they're just like what's wrong how do I fix it let me go take the action so yeah so that's how I look at mentoring coaching and consulting nice I love it Angela and I also love that you use the term leaks in your business because money leaks is something that I talk about all the time so I love that you're using that term um, in other areas of our business apart from money as well so Mm -hmm. why don't you tell us then what are those seven signs that it is time to hire a business coach so listen these are just things that I've seen collectively from when I get on discovery calls with women. I've seen this myself, right? When I have been looking for a business coach slash consultant. And so I always say to people that, you know, it's really important to understand what are these seven signs it's time to hire a business coach because sometimes our mind is like, it plays tricks on us. Do I need something? Do I know not as entrepreneurs? A lot of times we're overthinking things, right? Sometimes as entrepreneurs, we also have OCD, Uh, characteristics or perfectionist characteristics and we think we have to do everything on our own so the sooner we can start to identify these signs it's time to hire a business coach you're going to see both short and long-term growth start to happen and so one of the things that I say when you're looking at these signs is just have an open mind right but you're probably going to start shaking your head when we go through these Mm -hmm. I also think again it's it's often perceived that those that run their own businesses need to have everything figured out, right? And that's not actually the case because if we don't have everything figured out, we're failures and we don't know what we're doing and how can we run these businesses? So I also want people to be open about what stories and beliefs are you carrying throughout, you know, you may have heard these things in childhood. You've got to work harder. You, you can't, you know, you've got to be, in order to be successful, you must do it alone, whatever that is. And start to put those to the side because as soon as you can do that, you're going to start to see the growth. And so to me, this is where you enter that business consultant and a coach. They're going to be there to guide you, support you, and advise you accordingly in order to grow. So one of the signs, the first signs that it's time to hire a business coach is you're not seeing the results that you had expected. You know, I see established business owners uh, often that they're just like, I just, the results, they're just not there. So although you might have a clear plan and well thought out goals already in place, it's vital for businesses, that business growth to happen. And if it doesn't, it might mean that you're just not looking at it 
from a bird's view eye, or you might be too close. And so turning to a business coach during these times, and you might be a little bit too close to your business because you're not getting the results that you want, um, can help to improve on different areas, such as increasing your ROI. Again, you know about money there, mm -hmm. increasing your brand awareness or creating that holistic business plan, because again, we could be too close. So sign number one, that it's time to hire a coach is that you're not seeing the results that you had expected. Nice. I love it. Um, and I, yeah, I completely can, uh, can see why you might want help and support at that time. I also like the reference that you made to, you know, bringing in those thoughts that might come with you for your whole life. I know that for years I had this sort of underlying thought that I had to work really, really hard to make money, like extra, extra hard. Um, and that just, that thought just doesn't serve as a business owner at all. And therefore, you know, helping with reframing on that has been, has been incredibly important in my journey as well. So awesome. Number one, not seeing the results you has, had expected. What is number two, Angela? Number two, and so many of you are probably going to start, you're shaking your head, is you're starting to feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It's just like that overwhelm. You go to sleep overwhelmed. You wake up in the middle of the night and your heart's racing. You wake up in the morning, like everything just becomes feeling like really overwhelmed hard, right? And so one of the top signs that it's time to hire a coach is when that overwhelm is just, it's, it's too much. Your workload, you feel like it's there has to be another way out or you're also thinking like I'm going to have to throw in the towel because the overwhelm just creeps in in all parts of your area. And so you may be feeling overwhelmed um, as you do not know whether or not you're making a big enough profit. Again, I'm very big about money and about financial literacy for women. So it could be that you're worried about profit or it could be that you're feeling overwhelmed because you're no longer in control of your business. It's growing too quickly. All right. That is also another thing. Either way, a business a consultant and coach can help you to work through and get you back on this overwhelm. I also just want to it is that typically people will start in the stress then they kind of go to overwhelm then they lead to burnout and from there what happens is I'm, a, I'm actually a trained mental health clinician of 15 years diagnosing people with schizophrenia bipolar depression and anxiety and far too often this overwhelm if you don't get on top of that what happens is it actually potentially can turn into a full-blown mental health diagnosis where you're going to need therapy potential medication etc so again if you're starting to feel that overwhelm and you don't want it to start really controlling all areas of your life, this could be a sign that you need a business consultant and coach to come in and just kind of help you work through where is the overwhelm, what's stemming from it, what needs to change, and to just really get on top of that. Nice. And and exploring things like what systems and processes you can put in yes. place, what team members you can bring on to support you to alleviate some of that overwhelm. And also, of course, looking at the financial side to make sure you can afford all that to happen as well, I'm sure. Exactly right. Because as you know, is so often people will start just throwing things thinking that that's what's going to fix the problem. So then they start throwing money at it. Yes. What they don't realize is that the money is actually going to turn into another pro problem, which then turns into another overwhelm, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's just really being strategic about where this overwhelm is coming from. How, what, do we, what measures do we need to put in place to reduce that, not only for the immediate future, but for the long term, right? Because we don't want this overwhelm to keep creeping back in. We want to be able to get the mechanisms we need to reduce it from happening yeah completely i completely agree angela so overwhelm and that feeling of things just being so hard is number two what is number three that you have for us number three and this is one of the primary things i see the women that i that start hopping on discovery calls with me is you know what you want but you just don't know how to do it so many women that I work with are so smart, so clever, but it's just those little intricacies of the how to's. How do I get this funnel to go from here to here? How do I make this top of funnel connect to bottom of funnel? They know the, lingu the language. They know they need their funnel to be safe firing off, but they just don't know how to do it. So if you have an idea that you know will help grow your business, but have, have absolutely no idea how to implement it, a business consulting and coach can help with this. So whether or not it's launching a new product or service, rebranding or entering into a completely new territory, the professional advice and guidance that you get for a consultant and coach may be that push that you need to move you forward. So yes, yeah, so that's sign number three is you know what you want, but you just don't know the how to's. You're sick of Googling and trying to YouTube and stitch everything together. That's yeah. going to get you so far. But I genuinely believe that the transformation occurs when the transaction takes place. So when you're paying for a business consultant to come in, be emotionally review, uh, like removed from what they're doing, is again, they're going to see things that you don't. They're going to see those leaks. And again, they're going to help you with those how to's. So, so that's number three. 
Nice. And I love that the transformation occurs when the transaction takes place. Um, mm -hmm. And I know I've done it, particularly when I started my business and money was a bit tighter, spending hours upon hours Googling and YouTubing and not even actually knowing the terminology that I was trying to look for, <laughs> didn't really know the words. And I was just trying to you know, put, put things together to type into Google. But you're absolutely right when you can just say to a coach consultant, um, so I want to do this thing and that's the result I want to get. What is and, yeah, and they'll say like, yeah, what ha this is how we do it. Or it also, you know, it's people forget that when you hire a business consultant and coach is that you're not just paying for them. You're paying for the connections in their network because mm -hmm. your network equals your net worth. Mm -hmm. And so if your, your coach should have a pool of people that they can draw down on, I'll give you an example. I was on a one-to-one -one coaching call today and she is, um, she re she takes his, uh, uh, clothing, right? That's been like pre-loved clothing is what it is. And she puts it on to Shopify and resells it and they can sell thousands and thousands of dollars of this per week, right? So it works really, really well. However, the amount of time that they're utilizing in order to get those products. So it goes from Dubsado and then they've got to upload it into Shopify, whatever. So she's just started working with me and she said, and she's like, there has to be a better way. There's too many manual hours. And I said, listen, I said, I believe that Zapier or Zapier, however you want to call it, should be able to do this. It should be able to zap what happening in Dubsado over to Shopify and you might just have to go in there and clean, th clean things up. She's like, oh my gosh. So I showed her how Zapier worked. I said, listen, I said, I'm not a guru in this space, but a friend of mine, um, Jimmy Rose is, and he can save a hundred manual hours of labor every month through Zapier. Nice. I said, so why don't I connect you to James? So it's those how to's, right? How do I do this? We identify the problem. I'm not a guru, but let me connect you to Jimmy to consult with Jimmy for an hour. And you're going to have all this done and you're going to save hundreds of thousands, like not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds of dollars, which will turn into thousands of dollars a month instead of paying your VA to do it. And so she's like, oh my goodness, this is exactly what I need. So that's an example of, you know, the how to something's not working, but you're just not quite sure. And that's where we come in to make sure that you guys can patch that together and get moving on the business. Nice. I love it, Angela. That's awesome. So what do we have next? We're number four. Yes. So yes. So sign number four that it's time to hire a business consultant and coach, in my opinion, is you need a business companion to talk to. Mm -hmm. You might think, well, really? What's that relevant to? But let's be honest, friends and family don't really give two beeps, right, about our business. And they sure as heck don't want to spend time talking about business when we're over at their house, having a glass of wine, do you know what I mean, or out for dinner. So you can this is for your friends, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll lose friends and family very quickly, right? If you just keep talking about business. And so if this is happening for you and you're starting to feel really lonely in the world of business, this is another thing that I see is the loneliness of entrepreneurship. You may want to find someone that, again, you can talk to about, you know, without feeling exposed, what are family and friends going to think, you know, am I a failure? What does this mean? Or without impairing your credibility as a business owner. So hiring a business consultant and coach is a safe way really for you and your business to get honest feedback on your ideas, as well as having a partner to support you through that planning and implementation process. Nice. And I like the um, part as well that you're saying it doesn't impact your credibility as a business owner either. Cause I think sometimes people can be nervous about asking questions in, for example, public Facebook forums and Facebook groups in case people, their prospective clients look and go, oh, well, if they don't know that, then hmm, I'm not sure I want to work with them. And that, you know, that ties back into that as well, having that companion, having somebody just to ask the question so that it doesn't actually impact your credibility. Exactly right. Because there are, I mean, people are judging all of us every single day, right? Mm -hmm. You potentially could have been judging me going, the lady, it's 1030 at night in Aussie. She's showing up with a hoodie on, right? Not that you are, but you know what I mean? Like we are judging people all the time. Yes. And so again, you have to think about peers and especially in the online space, there are like keyboard warriors every single minute of every single day around the world looking to bag people out, right? So if you're already kind of wobbly, you don't need your confidence and self-esteem to go any lower, right? Mm -hmm. We want to build that up. We want to empower you to be able to make informed decisions and to know that's okay to ask for help, right? So yeah, it's definitely a way to, to not have to worry about decreasing your credibility about all oh, thinking you've got to know everything because you don't. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And no one does. No one can hold everything, particularly totally. particularly as you move through the stages of your business, things morph and change all the time. And therefore, we're constantly learning as business owners and constantly evolving as well. 
all the time. Like you'll, you, you too. I mean, I know you're really big about money and all that, but you'll probably learn from your peers every week, every day, something new. I'm, I'm in a different mastermind. I'll learn things from different masterminds. Like we're constantly learning. It's the worry when people stop learning. That's when I'm like, Oh, don't want to work with you. Right. So mm. to me is actually is I showcase me growing in my personal development to show people that, Hey, I'm investing 20, 40, $60,000 a year in my perverse in my professional development. And when people start to see that they actually do take me more serious, right? Because they're like, damn, if she's investing in this, what is that going to get for the results in our clients? So, you know, once you start to build that confidence, you actually are very proud that you've reached out to get that education and support you need. Nice. I love it, Angela. So tell me, what is sign number five that it may be? Sign number five. Consultant. Yeah, it's definitely you've lost the motivation. Now, mm-hmm. what I'm telling you, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't rocket science, but these are things that, again, when you're trying to block out, I don't need help, I don't need help. And these are the little subtle clues that are actually saying, actually, you probably do need help. Yeah, so they're almost I, the red flags, aren't they? They're the red flags, similar to like if you were to like diagnose someone with depression, like lack mm. of sleep or too much sleep, right? I'm mm. not eating, overeating. It's very similar about how we diagnose, do we need a consultant, do we not? So if you start ticking your head going, you know, yep, I'm not seeing results. Yep, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Yep, I don't know how to do the how-tos. Or yep, I'm needing a business. Like if you're saying yes out there, these are like indicators that you probably want to start looking for a business consultant or coach. It doesn't mean you have to take action right away, but just start the process, right? So to me, as you've sign number five is you've lost that motivation. You know, for some, losing motivation is a rite of passage when owning a business, right? So sometimes things seem to be going in all the wrong directions uh, that you feel as though there's no way out. Therefore, losing the motivation to carry on. Hiring a business consultant can help you out of these rough patches, giving you advice, guidance, and the motivation to get you back on track. Motivation is going to look different for everyone, right? Some people can still be motivated or think they're motivated, but then that's turning into being unproductive. So again, if you started to lose that motivation, you're like, why am I doing this? I'm not getting anywhere. Oh, I'll just go watch Netflix. Like if those are things that you're like, oh, I don't normally do that or I don't do this. Those are, you know, those are indicators that the motivation is decreasing and we want to get to the root cause of that to understand what do we need to do in order to avoid that from happening again, preventative measures, but what can we do to get you back on track? And a business consultant and coach will help with that. Nice. And you also mentioned kind of getting you out of rough patches when you're feeling that loss of motivation. And I think it's important to stress to everyone listening as well. Business is for the long term and it will come in cycles and you will have points where you do feel less motivated, where it is a bit of a rougher patch, where the seas are a bit stormy and that's okay. That's completely normal as you cycle through your business. But of course, getting support at that time can be hugely beneficial and help get you out of that slump much faster, help turn things around and help get you back on the path that you want to be on as well. And again, if you look at, for example, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, especially with what's been going on with COVID from around the world, right? Mm-hmm. Is if you look at, there's a lot of business owners that are coming to me going like, listen, I'm, I've lost my motivation. My creativity is gone. Like here in uh, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, we've just now gone to level four lockdown again. I'm in Queensland. We've only had one case, but you mm-hmm. know, people have lost their creativity and they're like, oh, I just don't know why I'm so unmotivated. I'm like, no, you're, you have lost your motivation because if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, your basic needs and safety are what is primary right now the safety of your family the safety of your income you know food you know there's like supplies that we can't get access to your mind it needs to be on that and that's okay right Mm -hmm. so uh, again when that's there's two of my women in my mastermind that I'm in that we're just talking about that and they were really beating themselves up I said hold on a minute this is a different, this is a situational loss of motivation. Yes. This is if COVID went away, you probably would, you'd probably still struggle and have your ups and downs as we all do. But COVID, do you know what I mean, is the, is the core cause of this because you just had everything stripped of you and your basic needs need to be dealt with. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely makes sense. Completely makes sense. I love that, Angela. So um, tell us number six. So yeah, so number six is really, you're at a point where you're like, I need to save both on time and money. So Mm. whether you are a new or established business, one of the main issues you may face is that you need to save on both time and money. Sometimes doing things on your own can mean that you're short on both of, you know, on both of the above. So having the outside perspective or a business consultant and coach can help you to get right on the straight and narrow. So a lot of times when we talk about both time and money is people are, uh, I'll have uh, my clients start to track their time using like a tool called Toggle. 
whole. Yeah. And what we found is that they're putting so much time into a particular element that's like a $10 task that we could be outsourcing, that if we looked at their hourly rate of $200 an hour, it's taking them five hours to do it, that's $1,000 that they're not able to bring in for the company. Mm -hmm. So, and they could have actually just paid someone $50 to do that same task. So if you're at a point where you're like, listen, I need to save on my time and my money because I'm the one that's doing it all. And I want to actually grow and make more profit and more revenue in my business. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is a this is a clear sign that uh, today you may need a coach to start looking at that with you. Nice. And again, I think this can happen at different stages as well. This doesn't just happen when people are thinking about their first hire, but it actually can happen as you grow and you get more people on your team. You can still end up with those lower value tasks that are actually taking up all your time as well. And so at every level, you can be assessing this. This isn't just for sort of startups making their first hire and moving away from doing it all themselves as well. This is for each stage of a business owner too. Yeah. And I think that people will also, when when they say that you'll, when you say, oh, you'll save money hiring a business coach or consultant, I think people's minds might go to, but hang on, they're gonna cost me loads. But the thing is, even though they do cost, they also save you money because they should be essentially bottom line positive in your business. So 100%. yes, you spend money on a, on a coach and consultant, but actually, the work that you do with them should result in a positive bottom line. 100%. So like my coaching is $1,500 per month. Mm -hmm. uh, if I can't get that back, we've got a problem. However, mm -hmm. I will caveat this. Your actions or inactions will determine your success or your failure. Mm -hmm. People think that hiring a business coach is like the magical, do you know what I mean? I'm going to sprinkle do you know what I mean? Pom-poms out my butt, right? And that mm -hmm. my life is going to be better. Yeah. But it still will come down to that business owner taking action or not. I can give all the strategy in the world, but if you don't do anything with that, that's yeah. not on me, right? Yeah. But I will say this, the strategy that I do use for one of my clients when we were in COVID, we had to pivot slightly and it was something that we had looked at. One of those clients, we just had a $250,000 fortnight. So in two weeks off of a $27 product. Mm -hmm. So we took her live retreats. She's an artist that she used to be able to primary income was d delivering that one-to-one -one in Mexico, the United States, Australia, etc. And I'm like, hold on a minute, we can't do that anymore. So let's package some of your stuff and let's just try a tiny offer. She cleared 250,000 or her revenue was $250,000 in the last two weeks. She's mm -hmm. paid off her mortgage, got a brand new car. Like, and so those are the things. Yes, yeah, she's paying me $1,500 per month, but we just brought her in 250,000. Yes. So again, like, I don't disagree. You've got to pay some of that money, but if you really, but I've also just saved her time and money, right? Mm -hmm. I've also given her an opportunity to grow without having to travel around the world. Um, so again, she can be closer to her grand, um, the grandbaby who's about to be born, right? So mm -hmm. these are all things that, again, it's about looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree, Angela. I love it. So um, last, but I'm sure not least, what is number seven in terms of your signs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, listen, number seven for me is, is you're, you're only taking your own advice rather than that of others. So you kind of get in this holding pattern when running a business. There are often people around you that see things differently. They're going to allow them to offer you really great ideas and how you're able to grow. However, if you're at a stage where you're finding you only listen to you, you're like, nope, that's not good. Nope, that idea sucks. Nope, they don't know what they're talking about. Normally that comes with like, again, you've got that overwhelm creeping in. You're like, I'm sick of this. I'm frustrated, whatever. So if you're starting to go, you're only people that think they know what they're doing in business is you. This is another indicator that it's time to start getting some neutral opinion from a consultant and coach to really help you, do you know what I mean, to unpack a little bit more of that. So that's sign number seven. You're only taking your own advice rather than that of others. Nice. And it can... It can be really easy to do that too, can't it? Because particularly when we start a business, it feels like it's all on us. It's mm -hmm. all, it, you know, and, and often we don't have friends and family like we spoke about before that we can share things with whether they don't have the expertise or quite frankly, we just bore them to death. And therefore, often we are in our own heads trying to work things out ourselves and trying to give ourselves advice. And absolutely, I think that um, getting advice from others is so incredibly important because everybody has different experiences they bring to the table and everyone has different um, skill sets and all those things. And actually, when we can feed off those, that can be incredibly useful as well when it comes to our business growth and achieving the goals that we want. 
sometimes it's just again that neutral opinion right that it's like that's where the magic happens yes. might be a bit uncomfortable but that uncomfortableness is leading to the growth right mm -hmm. and so again by getting that outside opinion it's like that's where the aha moments start to come because you're able to step away from the emotional part of being the business owner and just get a neutral opinion from someone and go actually that makes sense and then you're like boom it just shifts you right so again it's it's that's the importance of hiring a business coach Nice. I love it, Angela. So I'm loving the seven signs that we have, but can you tell me, are there any mistakes to avoid when hiring a business coach? Because, you know, some people might have had some interesting experiences <laughs> with coaches in the past and they might feel a little bit burnt. So what mistakes can we avoid so that we don't get burnt when we are hiring a business coach? Yeah. So um, mistake number one to avoid is hiring a friend or family member. Again, mm -hmm. to me, this should just be like common denominator, but I see so many people do this and then their relationship is tethered there. It potentially could impact their marriage. Like the list goes on and on. So mistake number one is don't hire a friend. Again, I believe a cardinal rule in business that is too frequently broken is that you work with friends, that you should never work with friends or family. Mm -hmm. I know it's tempting. All right. To break this rule because when it works, it can be really awesome. However, the issue is more often than that. It doesn't work and it can lead to deterioration of your business relationships or both. So hiring someone you're close with to be your business consultant and coach can be a result in actually holding you back instead of moving you forward. So that's mistake number one to avoid yeah. hiring friends or family. I completely agree with that too, Angela. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because initially you think, well, at least I know them and I can trust them. That's the kind of initial thought when you think about hiring um, a friend or family, but you're right. And often, Often though, the relationship is so close that actually they can't push you and they can't hold you accountable. And those types of things actually fall by the wayside as well. So you don't get those benefits of working with a coach or consultant when it is somebody that is that close to you too. And also it just can muddy the waters, can't it? You go to meet for a drink and all of a sudden you're in a coaching situation or vice versa, you come on for a coaching call and you end up speaking about a wedding you're going to next week and all these kinds of things can end up making it not such a great relationship. And that's where, again, I'm very big about having boundaries. Mm. I find the boundaries just get so murky about everything. Like you're now talking about finances with your sister-in-law, right? Mm. And then your sister-in-law is telling your brother about this and the brother's and telling the mom. And it's like, oh my gosh, because you don't have confidentiality agreements. Like, well, you should, when you sign up for the business consultant, there should be confidentiality agreements in place, etc. Whereas like, it just gets murky. So I'm like, avoid that. So mistake number one, when hiring a business consultant and coach is don't hire family or friends. I love it. Uh, Angela, have you got any other mistakes for us? To, uh, yeah, there's four other ones that I will wrap up really quickly. Is the state number two is hiring someone with limited connections. A lot of people don't think about this. And I, and it's, it's actually the first thing I think about whenever I'm about to work with someone, because as I said earlier, is your network becomes your net worth. And so an overlooked mistake when hiring a business consultant is not considering their contacts and connections. The advice and experience a business consultant gives you can be very, it can be invaluable but even more valuable asset can be their contacts. Mm -hmm. So you want a business consultant who can help build relationships in your field or do some research about the crowd that your potential coaches associated with. So that's really coming down to you. So this may not seem somewhat, do you know what I mean, important to you, but I'm telling you is if you have a business consultant coach who isn't connected and they say to you, you need to meet with someone to look at your cash flow and da, 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 da. And they're like, great, who do I go to? I'll oh, just go and Google that. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, I, and then they're like, oh, well, hold on. So now you've got to go and spend 10 hours researching someone in Facebook groups and referrals and whatever you then interview them. You then bring them on board. Well, now you've spent 20 hours trying to find someone and they could actually be the, a, a dud. Right. Yeah. So my thing is, is it's really important for me when I connect my women that I work with to those people who need things like SEO, copy websites, etc. is I've actually paid these people over the last 10 years of being in both my businesses. Mm. So I know the results that they get and I'm not going to refer someone that's going to damage my credibility and brand. Yeah. So mistake number two is hiring someone with limited connections. Nice. I completely agree as well, Angela. I know that, um, 
coaches and consultants I've used in the past have used their networks to support me. And similarly, I often use my networks to support clients in the work that we do as well. So um, I love that. Uh, so what is mistake number three? Mistake number three is not knowing what you want to achieve. Let me just repeat that. Not knowing what you want to achieve. One of the most common mistakes to avoid when hiring a business consultant and coach is not being clear on your own goals. Let me repeat, you taking responsibility for your own goals. Business consultants and coaches, we're not mind readers. Uh, we're not magic, right? So coming to us with a vague goal of wanting to improve your business overall is not going to yield you the immediate results that you're wanting. So before meeting with a business consultant or coach, analyze your business performance, look at where you are, look at where you're going, and look at specifically the areas that you want to improve. This is going to help streamline the process and again, saving you time and money. Nice. I can, again, completely agree with that 100%. Um, not being clear on the vision that you have for your life and your business just means that, that you typically end up in a place that you don't want to be because you didn't lead your business in that direction. It's not to say that a business consultant and coach won't help unpack that or refine your goals and stuff, but you can't just come saying, I need a business coach because I want to make a million dollars. Yeah. I would be going, but why? Mm. What is that going to better for your life and your family? What are your values that are associated with this? What, you know, blah, 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 right? Yeah. So that's mistake number three, not knowing what you want to achieve. And then mistake number four that I see is skipping the background check. And you might be thinking, well, what do you mean by this end? You would be surprised at how much information you can get from a quick Google search or a mini Facebook stock stalking in a nice mm -hmm. way obviously and these this mini stalking and this mini background check can actually reveal numerous things about potentially the person you want to work with as a consultant so use these tools to your advantage to research the credentials of your potential business consultant check out some of their testimonials see if they have any qualifications what events they attend what their professional history is good business consultants are proud of their experience and their expertise so information of them is not hard to find if it is again I always go, hold on, there's a red flag here, because in the world we live in today, you typically can always find a digital footprint on your consultant. So mistake number four is skipping the background check. Oh, yeah, so, so true. I completely agree. Um, I know that I have in the past looked to hire someone and done a quick Google and decided to change my mind on that <laughs> from what I have found. Um, so yeah, highly, highly recommend that as well. That's awesome, Angela. Um, I love these four mistakes. And I think- And I the last mistake them. is uh, I call hire without test driving. It's so common. So what I, what I say with this is it's one of the biggest mistakes to avoid when hiring a business consultant and coach is not to test drive before you agree to work with them. What I mean by this is you don't walk into BMW, Mercedes, Ford, whatever other cars you have over, do you know what I mean, in the UK, right? And tell the salesperson, draw up the contract for that $50,000, $60,000 car. I don't want to look inside. I don't want to speak with the salesperson. I don't want to ask any questions. Just, just sign me up. Yes. So if you don't do that for buying a brand new car or a used car, I don't care. You typically are asking questions. So if you're going to work with someone in a one-to-one -one capacity, you'll want to hop on a free discovery call with them, either with them or their team. All right. Yeah. This process allows you to ask questions, to get a feel of the person's personality, to learn more about their one-to-one -one services or what other services that they have. It gives you that chance to test drive. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to, just go and sign a contract for a brand new car, then why would you just sign a contract for a business consultant? So mistake number five is hiring without test driving. Now, I'm not saying that you're asking that consultant to go and create a strategy plan that's going to take them two hours of their time. That's different. You need to pay them for what their outcome is. What I'm saying is, is that they should be able to give you an opportunity to hop on a phone call and ask questions and for you to get a feel because it is so important that you are in alignment with the person you're going to work with because you are working with them in an intimate capacity. So you're potentially going to cry one day. You might yell one day, whatever that is. And you want to make sure that you can trust the person that this is going to happen with. Yeah, absolutely. And you're putting all your business on the table for them to see as well. And that can feel quite revealing to many people too. So you need to be able to understand that you are going to be able to have that connection, that rapport and that trust with them as well. Yep, 100%. So those are, like I said, the five mistakes to avoid when hiring a business coach, hiring a friend, hiring someone with limited connections, not knowing what you want to achieve, skipping the background check, and lastly, hiring without test driving. 
They are awesome, awesome uh, tips, Angela. And I'm sure that uh, when people implement them, it will save them a lot of heartbreak, time, money, and all those things because, um, because they are great, great mistakes to avoid. Angela, thank you so much. You've given us so much gold in this session and I'm really, really appreciative. I'm sure our listeners will be as well. Where can people find out more about you or connect with you? What does that look like, Angela? Yeah, I say the easiest way is to strictly just go to my website, angelahenderson.com.au, because from there, depending on how you consume information, you can either join my free Facebook community, the Australian Business Collaborative, you can listen to my own podcast, the Business and Life Conversations podcast, you can book a discovery call if you're looking for a business consultant, you can read blog articles, whatever that is. So, you know, I just, you know, come over into my community, we'll connect whatever way works best for you. And yeah, I'm really just about building relationships with people. Lovely, Angela. Thank you so much. And of course, we'll put all the links for everyone for this in the show notes as well. So you can connect with Angela directly there. Thanks again, Angela. It was lovely to have you on Uncover Wealth Radio. Thanks so much. Have an awesome day. You too.